thank you for <laughs> now growing fruit is so rewarding to me for several different reasons first because it's fun but also like just with my vegetables I know how it was grown and raised I know where it's coming from I didn't spray it down with synthetic fertilizers or chemicals and also because some fruit, especially with your exotic fruits, now this doesn't go for all fruits here, but some of them are picked too early, especially if they are being shipped out here from a different country or overseas. So sometimes they're picked a couple of weeks, if not a few weeks too early. And what happens is those fruits didn't get enough time to develop their natural sugars on the plant. And once they're harvested, they don't ripen as well or as much as they would if they were actually on the plant itself. So that goes for dragon fruit. Those are picked several weeks early because they do come from overseas. And what happens is they will look like they're ripening on the outer skin. Um, you'll see some changes there, but inside the sugars are not actually developing as naturally as they would otherwise. So when you're growing these fruits from home, you'll notice a much more pleasant, sweeter flavor than if you were to get them at your local grocery store. I'm growing 11 different fruits here on my Central Florida property and hopefully one or some of these will inspire you to go out and get your own if you're not already growing them. First one is a red raspberry called Nantahala. That's the variety. Um, it looks like it starts to bloom and produce fruit in the fall and winter months. I got this at a local nursery called A Natural Farm and I really recommend that, uh, that farm. They have so many different varieties of fruiting trees. I have this one here in a container. I will be placing this in ground when we move to our next location and these do really well, this particular variety, in zones 6 through 10. Next one I have here is the Meyer lemon and I got it at the same nursery about four years ago and I have it in a fabric container until we move to the next location which I will then place it in ground. It should not be in a fabric container so I have a video out on mistakes to avoid when growing in fabric containers so here we go again. I did it once again but I did this about a year ago I didn't really learn my lesson at that point hopefully I can easily remove this from the container I'll tell you I've had this for four years and I have never been able to enjoy one lemon from this tree because the squirrels have pulled off every single lemon that has ever formed on this tree in the last four years so what I'll do is I will protect the fruit with a fabric called tulle and trust me squirrels do not like tulle let me show you what it looks like this fabric right here is tulle i have dragon fruit in this container and it's being propped up right now by one of my homemade tp stakes or trellises it needs to actually go into a stronger, much larger container, but that will happen once I move. Now, if you're growing this from seed, it could take several years for you to see a flower and fruit. I understand that the time frame is a little shorter if you're growing it from cuttings, and I was given this cutting here. Let me show you this one by a neighbor of mine about four months ago, and it has grown all of this. In the last four months the next one I have here is pineapple I have about four or five pineapple plants and I grew this from just taking off the pineapple tops from the pineapple that I would just normally get at the grocery store and I have them in containers I will leave them in containers but when we move to the next location I will plant some in ground to kind of compare see how they do. The next ones I'm growing are blueberries and I have two here in 15 gallon containers. I got them at the same nursery and the owner of that nursery did let me know that they should do really well in this size container. They will also grow to probably five feet tall ish give or take. They are in containers because of the soil. They are a little more picky when it comes to their soil. They like a more acidic and well-draining soil. 
and therefore I find it easier to manage and maintain right in here. They flower and produce fruit in the fall and winter months so each one of these flowers will become a blueberry and they are both southern high bush varieties one is called snow chaser and the other is called jewel they both do really well here in florida this one here is an acerola cherry or a barbados cherry they produce fruit that is a little more tart than your average cherry but they also pack a lot more vitamin C than your other cherries and they are really good. They flower for me in the fall and winter months and I've had this one for about three years. It was initially in a container and I placed it in the ground not realizing that we would eventually end up selling our home so I'm going to uproot this and place it into a container so that I can transplant it to the next location. The next one I have here is a dwarf mulberry and it seems to want to go dormant right now. I think they go dormant in the fall and winter months, but this one here produced a lot of fruit in the spring of this year. And I noticed there are a couple little berries I might end up just pruning this back. I will cut each branch about halfway down. I learned this from Wild Floridian when she had pruned her mulberry trees and they did wonderful. They recovered nicely. So I did the same thing with mine earlier this year. I'm going to do it again and uproot it, place it in a container and transplant it to the next location as well. This here is a passion fruit and it has died because I actually intentionally did that i pruned this back um, about 90 percent of it and i'll put a photo up here of what it actually looked like before i pruned it but my intention was to prune it back and remove it from the ground place it in a container remove this trellis and bring it all with me but i decided to take cuttings instead i thought that would be a lot easier and even with that hard pruning, I can already see new growth right here. So here are the cuttings from the purple passion fruit that I took. And I placed them directly in the soil and I can already see new growth forming right here. And then my yellow variety is right in here. This is totally not part of the plant. I just noticed this is, I think this is sweet potato. Oh my God, how did that even end up here? I don't know. And I'm noticing more sweet potatoes here. They are everywhere. <laughs> Next one I'm growing here is the papaya. And I actually grew this one from seed. I don't know whether it's a male or female or a hermaphrodite. I think there's only one variety, if I'm not mistaken, that's an actual hermaphrodite and I think it's called, I can't think of the name, but I will put it up on the screen for you here. I am still waiting to see what this turns out to be and I had another one here and during Hurricane Ian it kind of just knocked over and completely died. These were also grown from seed and they're too young to know whether they are male, female, or hermaphrodite. So females will produce fruit if you have a male nearby to pollinate it. Best ones to have, of course, are hermaphrodites, but I don't have that variety here. Those do not need a male. They are self-pollinating. And then the males will not produce any fruit. But you can utilize the leaves in your cooking and also for teas. Then I have another little bunch over here. These were also grown from seed, but I don't know, of course, what they are. They have not started flowering yet. I may just place all of these in containers, or I might end up leaving a couple here for the new homeowners. Hopefully, they'll get to enjoy papayas next year. This next one here is a dwarf Namwa banana tree. 
and it has already produced two pups for me that I will remove from the mother plant and take them with me. I'm going to leave this mother tree here because it has not produced fruit yet, so that will be enjoyed by the new homeowners, but I will definitely take these two pups here with me. I will put them in containers. I'm just waiting until the very last minute so that they can grow a little larger or longer before I try separating it from the mother plant. And of course more sweet potatoes everywhere. It's out of control, but it's a good thing. Now this is technically not a fruit, but it acts like a fruit. I recently made a Roselle jam that I created a short um, when I was doing it and it is delicious. It legitimately tastes like fruit. It has a nice tart flavor similar to cranberry but i find that it has a fruitier flavor fruitier notes um, than the cranberry does and i recently harvested a whole bunch of them and i still have so many here left on the plants so i know that the new owners will get to enjoy these hopefully I might do one last harvest before we move. We have about a week left here, but that depends on how big these calyxes, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, how big they form before that time comes. Okay, so what I have here are organic blackberry seeds and they have been in the refrigerator since September may not have needed to go that long in the fridge but i understand that these type of seeds like garlic and certain types of onions like shallots they need to go through a cold stratification process first um, to mimic winter months so what i'm going to do is i'm going to now place these in the soil and I'll just kind of scatter them over the soil and cover them just very, very lightly. I'm not going to bury them very deep because the seeds are really small. So I'll check back in with you guys in a few weeks to let you know if this worked or not. If any of them germinated or sprouted. But this will be a fun one to follow along and see if it actually works. push it down slightly and this soil is already pretty moist so it does not need to be soaked although it does look like it's going to rain check out this overcast sky hey mama you're so pretty